Hello, it's time for our lesson. I don't know how many of you are gonna be able to make it today, but that's okay, maybe you'll watch later. So you see, well, you can't really see it back there. Well, you can kind of see it. I do have my blue vase set up back there, and I went ahead and um, took a photo, took a few photos, decided the one that I liked the best, I like this one the best, and I printed it out. <clears throat> so I did a few things. I'm diving right in. <laughs> I, um, I duplicated the photo on my phone and converted it into mono, AKA black and white grayscale, right? So I have two of this image and um, made them eight by tens. On the iPhone, it's real easy to do that. So then I printed it out to size and trimmed it to eight by 10, both of these. And then I drew a uh, nine square grid on it and um, this is a great way to draw your items onto your canvas you know and get them to scale and everything like that let me tag everybody here so that's how i'm getting started here okay um <clears throat> so Hopefully that all made sense. Hopefully you got all that. I'm gonna be painting on an eight by 10 canvas. I have a few different ones. I haven't decided if, I mean, these I just had laying around. And sometimes I like using a really textured um, uh, swipe with gesso to begin with. See the interesting texture in there? That can make a really big difference in um, making your painting a little more interesting. Anyway, we'll decide about that later. I've got my um, palette board here, my, my palette box. Um, my yellow sponge got all full of mold because I left it sitting too long, I guess. And so I'm using two shop towels that are nicely damp, but, but wrung out, you know, not dripping wet. And then I've got my palette paper soaking in the sink with hot, hot water. Um, it needs to soak at least 10 minutes, and I think it has been 10 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and pull, pull this out of the sink here and put it in my box and, uh, you know, get ready, get my paints out with you. I thought I'd show, show you that. I kind of have a hard time sometimes figuring out which side when it's wet like this i don't know which side is the paper side but if you really look at it one one side looks a little more textured than the other and i'm pretty sure i want the coated side up so let me lay this down in here sorry i'm off camera Okay, and you want this to make contact with your um, shop towels for sure. I have it, my shop towels doubled up on the edges too, a little bit. It's not exactly in there, but that's good enough. Okay, so um, I'll squirt my paints out in just a second. Let me dry my hands off. Um, so I'm going to do a really quick value study. I thought I'd show you that. Hopefully this will stay. <clears throat> and, um, it's a good idea to do that because then you can kind of get yourself a little bit familiar with your subject. So you're a little more comfortable when you're actually going in and doing the painting and you can kind of plan out what you're going to do. So um, I'm gonna transfer this grid onto a scaled down version. So all I did on this piece of sketch paper is I um, drew an eight by 10. I traced it from this canvas, draw a diagonal line from one corner to the other, and then pick, pick a point anywhere on this diagonal line and draw a true horizontal and a true vertical and you'll have it scaled down. Then I drew my nine square grid on here. 
And a, a quick cheat that I do, uh, you can use your calculator to figure out, you know, whatever this is divided by nine. This turned out to be six inches tall. So that worked out easy to, to you know, I, I put a tick mark on the two and the four. But for this way, it wasn't real clear. So if you just put the ruler on this, this point right there, and then I brought this down so that the six, so this unit is divide, divisible by three. And then I put a tick mark at the two and the four and drew true verticals for that. So that's just a, a hack. <laughs> anyway, now I have this scaled down eight by 10 because I don't want to do a, a full size um, sketch. So um, I'm going to go ahead and draw this and um, maybe, well, I'm going to use a pencil. And I just, oh boy, I sure have these lines awfully dark. So let me lighten them up a little bit. Let me grab my kneaded eraser. And um, so, yeah, I wanted today to be a little bit about, you know, concentrating on values and using our standard palette of colors and just incorporating, you know, the, the palette box, bringing it all together into um, a, a painting. So here, let me use this one. So um, it's right, oh, that's not a tick line there. It's, uh, it's almost at the halfway mark of this middle box, but just a little bit higher. So that's the top of that. Um, this is almost at the middle, but but uh, a little further than the middle, so about like that. This is just barely in, so it's like that. Um, I'm gonna look at this box only and see that it goes to about here. Um, this comes out, oh, not even halfway. This comes out less than halfway. Maybe about here is the so I was probably off with that. So, so all of this is judging. <clears throat> We're just judging um, distances. So this is about, in this box, it's uh, about here, I'm guessing. And it's just about on the line over here. and comes in here. So you're better off doing a straight, straight lines first and then um, smoothing them out. And this is a little bit of an ellipse here, so I'm gonna do a, just a really subtle curve. So I'm doing a squared off version first. There's a tiny bit of an ellipse here, not, not too much. Not too much at all. But um, this is good, I'm getting a feel for this thing. I know, I'm noticing that this has a slight angle right here didn't even notice that before. And then I'm just gonna round off this corner and round off this corner and round off this corner. So it's much easier to, you know, round off a corner when you're doing a really, that's why I chose this um, shape vase. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. Now, I'm gonna squint really hard and look at the, the form on, on my subject and just kind of draw the halftone line. You gotta make a decision where it is. So it kind of goes like this, right? 
like a subtle little S. And then this, there's a lot of reflected light here, which can be confusing, but um, don't, the, the, the reflected light belongs to the shadow side. Right now I'm deciding what's in light and what's in shadow. I have to draw the line somewhere. So I'm squinting down and deciding it's right about here. Okay, and then there's a highlight right about here and another little highlight here. A uh, couple more highlights. Okay, and then I'm gonna draw this shadowy background part. Where does that become light and, and where is it shadow? It starts here, and I wanna draw straight through so I don't miss that angle, it goes out to there. Of course, on this side, it's much softer. Same thing with this. The shadow of the vase is, is a much sharper line, very thin right here, kinda of curves and goes off almost straight, really. And then there's a shaft of light back here, very soft edge. So this will be good practice. And the shadow itself is gonna be darker right here, darker and sharper edged right here and get softer as it goes back. So that's, that's really, that's the whole drawing. Now I can erase these lines and do some, some values. Now when I look at this whole thing, and, I, and it might be easier to look at it in black and white. Well, maybe not. <laughs> but it's very subtle, but it gradually gets just a little bit lighter up here. You know, do you notice that? And this side of the vase almost disappears into that background, um, which I kind of like, but that's totally up to you. We see it more in color. You know, we can see the edge just a little bit more. So, um, all right, let's erase these lines a little bit more pretty distracting, aren't they? And um, see if we can get some values in here. Just a quick, this is just a quick thing, really. So I'm just kind of lightening up all of this a little bit and see what happens if I play around with my grayscale markers. And of course, um, I don't know that I have them in order, so let me do that first real quick. Because I can't always tell by the lid, <laughs> you know? I think this is right. I don't know. Let's see. Eighty-nine, sorry. Ninety-five. Oh, see that jumps really dark. Uh, Sixty-five. See, it doesn't look, maybe I put the wrong lid on here. Maybe that's what happened. Hmm, I wonder if that's what I did. Fifty-five, wow. Forty-five. Well, these look about right, actually. Well, this seems like it goes somewhere over here. Sixty. Well, yeah. Or no, it would be, I put it in the wrong place. Oh, well, whatever. Sixty. Uh... 75. Okay. Um, all right. Well, let's just guess that um, our lightest value, 89, 
let's put our lightest value in here, right? We're gonna save the white highlight. And there's also a highlight on this other side of the rim of the, I guess this is a, is this a, this is a vase. <laughs> what is this thing? Okay, actually this is, oh, this is a darker value than the background. So let me make it the same as the background. Oh, maybe I, hmm. Maybe I should have used a darker value for the vase. See, I already kind of messed up. Yeah, that's all right. I'll make the vase a, another layer of this. <laughs> So that background is really light. The background's lighter than my subject, for sure. Okay. See, this is why it's a good idea to do this. Okay, now. Um, oh, this might be the really darkest part. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here. I might regret this, but I don't know. I kind of want the drama. And then here, Right, and then it's gonna get lighter and lighter. Oh, 15 is even darker, okay. Um, so let's, let's get more of that in there. Probably I want maybe 45. And you know, it's gonna get gradually just a little bit it's still pretty pretty dark squinting and evaluating I'm going to do it about like this okay I'm not gonna put this value over there and I just don't think it's that dark. Okay. Uh, then I'm gonna go a little lighter. 45, 55, where's that? Okay. And I think this'll work for this, yeah. is gonna come all the way down to here. and then it gets a little bit lighter, 65. And maybe even lighter still. Um, 60 would be darker. Let's go back to this. Oh, that's a little too light. No, I don't want that light. Okay, guess I gotta go back to this.
Okay. All right, so now this continues off. And I'm, now I'm gonna compare, is this as dark as, as there? It actually is. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. It's right about here. Kinda goes up over here and here. It's definitely in here, pretty dark. And even on the rim, right? It kind of almost, well, it, it goes into the background there, so. And this. Okay, and then it kind of just blends. So let's try 75. I mean, remember, this half is in shade, so I have to have this all, at least this, you know, I have to have this whole side um, a darker value than this side. Anything on the uh, left side of this line has to be, you know. There might be some parts that kind of cross over right in here. You know, right here, it's just a little bit darker. So maybe I'll use my lightest value and just do some blending. And over here, it's just a little bit darker. And I think that's, and then here, this is just a little bit darker to define the edge of the vase. Okay, and um, I probably could have made this just a little bit lighter. So like I could actually go back in with white pencil. <laughs> You know what I mean? If this were important, that's what I could, would do, but I don't need to do that on this. I want to make it a little bit lighter if my marker would work. There it goes. And there's this highlight. So it's just kind of a quick cheat. And that really, yeah, there you go. All right. So, um, I think that's about right. Um, so what I noticed is that on this edge, it really kind of blends into the background and this value right here is just a little bit darker in the middle of the vase. So to really make that come forward, I might just go a little darker. I think it was 65, right? Just in the dark area. There we go. Is it just a bit more oomph, you know? And of course, there's there's some more refined modulations we can do on there, but that's pretty good. So that's it for the value study. Let's take these markers and put them back in the bag and go back. Now we're gonna um, get our paints out and I'll show you my setup for the painting. Um, so yeah, I mean, I could put a ground over this entire canvas of, you know, let's say this middle value. And if I don't know what that value is, I can look at my um, grayscale, you know, my black and white of it, and then get my grayscale finder. I mean, it's pretty dark. Get my grayscale finder. And, uh, oh boy, it's like a, this has the numbers where one is black. And um, it's really like a, 
you know, a two. <laughs> it's pretty dark. It's super dark. And um, this is about a seven on here. But I'm going to look at my value scale with my numbers. I have them the other way. So let me grab that out of my book. Painter's Journey book. Uh, yeah, I've got this thing. It's kind of small, but you know, we're doing one as white. And if I hold this up over here, yeah, it's a dark. So I'd say it's a seven dark. Okay, and this is a three light. All right, so a seven dark I want to do um, for most of that background. Seven dark. And the light side of the vase I mean, it's right in the middle. It's about a five. See, it's very hard to, to, to judge uh, chroma, to judge value on, on something chromatic, something saturated like this. It's very hard to tell what value that is. Um, but it is a five. I mean, it just doesn't look like it when you do this. <laughs> but it is. So that's why it's easier if you convert your photo to uh, mono, to grayscale. You'll be able to see it much easier, you know. So, um, okay, and um, all right, so let's go ahead and do our um, palette and get started painting. Let's see, how do I want to do this? I've got it behind me over there. <laughs> all right, well, let me, let me, um, let me set up my palette with you here on this table. And um, we're gonna do the standard setup. And I do want you to put out all of your colors, your standard, your split primary palette. You always want to put out all those colors, and we're going to mix our secondary colors. So we're going to put white up here, yellow here. Um, I'm going to use my thicker white. I'll have to use my tube titanium white. Okay, so here's that. Okay, white in the upper left corner. Our light colors go on top. Um, on the right side, I'm going to put my cad yellow light. Down here, I'm going to put my red. Probably way more red than I need, but I'm also going to put out my cool red.
Okay, my um, blues go over here. So it would be your warm blue first, which is ultramarine. And then the cool blue, which is thalo blue green shade. And I do want to put some black out also. Um, just a little black and some um, neutral gray. And I'm going to use some transparent burnt umber too. And since that's, you know, a neutral, it's just, I'm going to put it towards the middle here. Okay. And of course, if I needed an orange and a green and a purple, I'd go ahead to mix those. Really, I don't need those today for what I'm doing. At least I don't think I do yet. Um, oops, I got a marker left out. I think I am going to go live later and do, um, since I got these out, I'll come back on and do a separate video showing this, showing how to do this and do the grayscale. This is very good practice for you guys. I want you to do these. Okay, so um, we are ready, I think. Oh, I didn't put my warm yellow out. Here's this. Put my warm yellow out too case you know so yeah anytime you're gonna paint you should set out all of your paint colors because you never know what you're gonna need um, okay and now we are ready to paint now I didn't figure out how I'm gonna do this because my setup is over there um, you know what let me clear off this other table and just move my whole setup Too much stuff in this studio, I tell you. Okay, so <laughs> let's go over there to the other side of the studio. All right, I'm gonna take you with me first. I don't know how I wanna do this yet, so forgive me. See, here's my setup. Here, let's just do this for now. Turn my light on. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, I guess you can. You're up a little high. Turn this light off. Grab my paints. My water. I need to grab some brushes. 
and uh, yeah, this might work. I got a couple of tubes there. Those really match that uh, base pretty well. <clears throat> All right, let me just grab a couple brushes. You know what, I think I, I think I really would like to have some texture on this canvas, but oh well, that's just going to take too much time. So, um, actually I can tape these to that back wall. that might distract me though. We'll see. Maybe not. Alright, I don't know how much of this you can see. And yeah, okay. It's kind of cool from this angle actually, isn't it? And there's my tomatoes underneath there. Very excited not to paint. I thought the tomatoes might be a little too complicated. You know, sorry Charlie, you gotta move. Alright, so I'm going to turn you around, <laughs> hello, and um, hmm. we will figure this out, you guys. Maybe if I have you right here, I don't know if that's going to be a good angle. I guess this will work. You need to be able to, I'm, I'm looking straight at my subject right in front of me. So actually, this, this is working. This canvas is a little bit caved in, but I'm not gonna worry about that. All right, I think we can get started. Oh, so, um, I'm gonna mix my colors first, okay? And I want to talk about that gorgeous teal. I mean, I could use those two colors. I'm not going to because, you know, we're all about learning how to mix, right? So, and, and you know, maybe I will do that cardboard that we see back there. So that's why I'm glad I do have this uh, to look at. Oh, I should turn this this way. So, I'll, oh, let me grab a palette knife. Okay, so yeah, let's do some color mixing here. Yay, fun, fun, fun. I don't know, hmm, I've never mixed cardboard color. Maybe burnt sienna would be a better color to start with. Um, but uh, okay, so what I'm gonna need is um, this color, this color, this color. There's nuances of other color in here, but we want to get the main, like what's the main 
uh, local color is what it's called. And I'd say it's somewhere right around here. It's almost like a cerulean blue or manganese blue. It, right here, it becomes a little more vivid, which is interesting, more saturated, and then it goes dark. So we're gonna figure out what we need to use to make this color dark without it looking purple or green or something else. And that, that's probably gonna be a little challenging. Um, because we don't necessarily just add black because black has color in it. But we'll test it out and see. And, and matter, as a matter of fact, I should probably get some little um, test swatches of paper um, to test out our colors. You know what I'll do? I'll go grab my sketchbook that we were just using. So, so please understand, this lesson isn't just about doing this painting. It's about color mixing. It's about drawing. It's about setting up a still life. It's a lot of different things going on uh, simultaneously here. But I think it's going to be of great value to you. All right, so got my sketchbook here. <laughs> Too many things to try and uh, have, have on the screen. It's hard. All right. So, I want to mix this color right here. And sometimes what you can do, it's called uh, isolating a color. And so I'm just gonna take a little card. Actually, I can take this little tag right here. So I can open this up. That might be too small of a hole. Take a little tag with a hole in it. And you can just isolate one color looking through the hole, you know, so that you're not distracted by everything else. Or you can even just cut a bigger square out of that. So let me do that really quick. Oh, Charlie, you're always in the way and laying right there. I'm gonna just cut a hole, a square hole, super quick. So when you isolate it, you really see it differently, you know? And of course, depending on if the light is hitting or not hitting it or not, it really changes. Wow, that's interesting. So anyway, that's what we're gonna go for, that blue. And that's darker than I thought. And we did figure out that it was a level uh, five, didn't we? So, that's pretty interesting. All right, let's try and mix that color. What do you say? What do I do with my palette knife? Here it is. Okay, so um, the first thing you wanna go is, well, is it blue, is it green? It's both. <laughs> we know from doing our color wheel, uh, looking at our color wheel, it's a blue-green. It's a little bit more to the blue side though, right? So um, I've got, um, you know, phthalo blue green shade. So we we know that that is, um, look at what I did. I already got paint on my finger. I forgot paper towels, shop towels. Let me grab a couple. So um, I've got myself some phthalo blue green shade. Maybe I'll move this over for now. And I'm gonna add a bunch of white. And it is easier when you mix with a palette knife. And you know, I'm gonna need a bit of this, so. And you just wanna go back and forth with the bottom of the knife to get it all mixed. So when I added that white, it made it a little bit lighter. Maybe that's too light now, not sure. But what I can do is take this and compare it to this. 
and oh, well, it's closer than I thought, but it is lighter. So that's okay, just add a little bit more blue. This is not enough paint that I'm mixing. Need to be a little more generous, I think. Sometimes just pressing down into it helps mix it too. That looks pretty good. Now it's gonna dry a little bit darker. So now it looks like I made it actually a little too dark. So I definitely want to go lighter because, as we know, acrylic paint dries a little bit darker. And um, really the first thing you want to look at, though, before value, oops, that's way too much, is hue. Is it the right color family? Is it the right um, blue amount of blue or green or yellow or what have you? And I would say it looks, uh, it might be a little too warm. Huh. It could be just a smidge greener, cooler. So I'm going to add the tiniest bit of uh, yellow, uh, my cool yellow tiny 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 bit and um, I think that really helped it actually now I know yellow normally warms things up but this just needed to go a little bit more towards the green um, so actually that warmed it yeah <laughs> and oh now it it does look like it's too warm. So maybe I screwed up with that. I mean, I love this color, but actually now the vase looks purpler, which means I need a cooler color. So, okay, let's go ahead and do that. No biggie. So we'll get another um, pile going with our blue and white. I cleaned off my knife too, by the way. And if I want this to be a slightly cool, first of all, it's gonna look slightly cooler because I don't have the yellow in it. But if I wanna be cooler still, I could add ultramarine blue to it. So, you know, theoretically, this first blue that I mixed could be the, the um, first mix could be what's in where it's really the lightest. I could use that over here where there's more of the reflection of the yellowish cardboard on there. That would work really well for that. So, you know, don't throw it out or anything. I think I just need a little bit more of this. I need more white out. All right, so here's this without doing anything to it. All right, and it's too dark. Get more white in there. So you kind of have to get the value first, I think. The value and the chroma at the same time. You know, I mean the value and the hue, sorry. All right, it could be just a little bit cooler, so I'm gonna add a tiny bit of ultramarine blue to this. And there's a subtle, subtle difference now. Let me wipe this off the knife so it doesn't throw me off. But can you see the difference between these two blues? There's a very subtle difference. One is warmer than the other. 
So now when I put this up over here, yeah, that actually looks a lot better. It's just a little bit dark, but it, it's, it's much closer on the hue. You know, and hue just means color family, red, blue, green, purple. So let me get a little more white. And I don't have to worry about these colors drying out. They're not going to dry out because I've got them on the Stay Wet palette. Hey, Tanya, how are you? Glad you could join me. I was feeling a little lonesome here. <laughs> uh, this paper towel is getting all full of stuff, so I'm going to grab another one. Um, okay, this might be too much white. I don't know. Let's see. So I'm mixing my blue for this, this uh, turquoise vase. Let's see how this one looks now. I hope this is it. That looks really good. It may be just a little bit lighter, tiny bit lighter. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more white for that because I know it's gonna dry even darker, so. All right, so I think we've got our, we've got our light, our mid-tone, and now I wanna do a shadow for the blue part of the vase. So, well, let's double check this first. And we're mixing all our colors first. And you can do that when you've got a Stay Wet palette. Colors will stay for weeks even. Okay. Yes, that looks great. Very happy with that. So, I mean, I could have left it just a mix of my Thalo Blue Green Shade with white. It wasn't bad, but I decided to tweak it just a little bit more and um, made it a little bit cooler. I added a tiny bit of ultramarine blue to it. Okay, so now I want to do, and like when we drew, when, it, when we did our drawing, we decided that right here was the halftone line. Anything um, to this side of it is in shade, so this definitely needs to be darker. So I want to do my shadow value now, my shadow mixture, and um, you really don't want to automatically add black because you don't know what that's going to do but we're going to try it gray might work better but the problem with gray is that it's going to well any anytime i add put it this way anytime i add another color it desaturates it right so let's start with our our blue right we're going to need a decent amount of this actually i probably could have just left it where it was the bad thing about the palette box is, um, yeah, let's just leave this where this was, is um, the edge of the box gets in the way. Okay, um, I am gonna add just a little bit of black to it. Not much. I also need to add a little bit of white to it. because we know that's the mix of our color. Um, this might not be bad. Okay, no, it's way off. So it's way too saturated, so it's way too blue right? And it's way too, uh, well, it's way too saturated for me to even tell anything else. So um, I can definitely add gray now since I've got it. I'm going to add, I'm going to add this gray and a decent amount of it too. And it's going to desaturate it, but that's going to be okay. 
Um, that gray, I can tell, had a little bit of, it's, I don't know, a little bit of something warm in it because this looks, this went just a little bit green on me, but that's okay. I do see a little bit of green in, in this area anyway. So we might be ever so slightly closer, but I think I need more white. I keep hitting my red. <laughs> I shouldn't have put the red on my palette. It's just causing me problems. Okay, so here's, here is with um, a little bit of white mixed in. We're getting closer, a little more gray maybe. Yeah, we're almost there, right? It feels like it's the color down here. And then up here, there's a little more black. I mean, there's a couple of different colors going on. So let me take some of this and make this other color here. Now that looks cooler. So I'm gonna get some ultramarine blue in there and some black. a little bit more yeah that looks pretty good maybe even just a bit darker tiny bit more black and blue Yeah, I think we got it. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Love it, love it. And this really is greenish. This is gonna look really nice when we do this. And then right in here, it's just more of a pure um, phthalo blue green shade, which I might add later. All right, so we got our colors of our blue vase. Now for the background. Um, we've got, we really just, we're going to do three shades. We're going to do, um, we're going to do this, you know, this tone, maybe this tone and this tone, like three values. And this is really a yellow. If I had raw sienna, that would be what I would use there. Um, but we can make, we can mix that ourselves. So let, let's do this light value first. So I wiped off my knife really good. Maybe I'll wipe it again. We're mixing all of our colors first. And you know what, now that we've got the blues mixed, I'm gonna go ahead and, and put them on my uh, sketch. Just for the heck of it. So here is my shadow color, right? Shadow color, then I've got this darker color that comes in here and here. Okay, that's our, our whole kind of half tone area. Then we've got our light color, or you know, our mid-tone mass. Kind 
gonna blend this here a little bit. And then we've got this um, somewhat warmer color for this part up here. So that looks pretty good, actually. Um, this reflected um, down here, I can make just a little bit warmer by adding a little more gray to it. Playing that up a little bit more. Also in the lip here, maybe. And uh, so yeah, that looks pretty good. So anyway, swatching out my colors to see if I like them, and I think I do. And then I can also let this dry um, and see how it looks when it's dry. Okay, so now we're, let's go ahead and mix our background color. We've, and like I said, we've got three shades. So let's do the light, the light shade first. Okay, so that is going to be, it's mostly a yellow when I look at this. It's mostly a yellow. It's a warm yellow. So I'm going to grab that with my palette knife, right? I'm going to knock everything off. Okay, grab some warm yellow. And it's very desaturated, so um, the opposite of yellow is purple if I want to desaturate that, right? So if I add black, I'm going to get this. It's not really a yellow orange yet. Kind of make, I need to make it a little more orange, don't I? Yeah. I could do that by adding this. Um, now I don't remember if this was burnt umber or raw umber. Let me go look at my tube. It's burnt umber. So I'm going to add burnt umber to this yellow to make it more of a, it's going to desaturate it and move it more towards orange. Burnt umber really is an orange, believe it or not. Because if you add black, the black is usually has blue in it and that's going to make the, make it into a green. So this isn't too bad. This is kind of working. Needs to be a little more desaturated. When I add white, that's gonna cool it, which is gonna help. So let's add some white. That white had a little bit of my blue in it, but that's okay. And we're getting there. We are getting there. It's still too yellow. Um, let's see. So to make it more, hmm. If I want it more neutral, oh, there's nothing on here to show me that. It's a bit towards red orange. It says to add black. Actually, I think I need to add orange. Yeah. So orange is yellow and red and see that's what's missing here i need if i add some red to this then in theory i've added all the primaries and that's what neutralizes so i'm going to add this um, warm red just a little bit Yeah, that looks good. Now if we add white to that, it's probably going to look a lot better. And I could probably even add some of my blue, believe it or not. So here's more white. Had a little bit of blue 
It was dirty from blue a little bit, but that's okay. And I think we're really getting a lot closer now. Um, a lot it needs to be a lot whiter. Okay, so I'm just going to take half of it and add a bunch of white. Instead of trying to make that entire pile the color I want, I'm just going to take half of it to test my theory. That way at least I haven't ruined that whole entire pile I worked on. And I think that's it. Um, could be just a little more neutral. I'm thinking um, it, look, it needs to look pinker. So I'm going to add my cool red now. Just a little bit of cool red and some white. It just looked, oh, maybe that was too much. <laughs> so I made a, I made a peach. Wow, that was strong. But you know, this peach color looks really good with that blue green. So. Oh, actually that looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna go with that. Okay. So let's go ahead and put that on our background here too. Yeah. I like it. Oh, he smeared a bunch of red on there. I used my knife to put it on. And that's not bad. Okay. Um, now we want to do our... You know, and I'm going to keep this mix just in case I need it. You never know. I might use that to transition into this uh, darker shade. And definitely this looks like burnt sienna. I could, if you have a tube of burnt sienna, I would definitely use that. But we don't have it. And we're all about learning color mixing. So let's see what we need to do to do that. So anyway, here this is with the peach on there. And that looks pretty good. All right. So now oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. This background, um, this really dark color, I'm going to put that in here. I'm going to mix black with um, my burnt umber and I'm going to add a little gray to it also. And that looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, so that's my dark. I'm just kind of putting it on with my knife. And then it's going to transition up into a warmer brown. So let's just kind of move this over here, take some of it. And I'm going to take this pinky red, put that in there. Maybe some warm red too. So we just basically made burnt sienna and a little gray so it's not so saturated. And the gray that I'm using is, um, sorry, Charlie's barking. I think it was six, actually. Neutral gray six. That looks pretty good, but it's too saturated. So I'm going to add more gray. See, gray can be such a great convenience. Mm, pretty good. Maybe, maybe even just a tiny bit more gray, but for, I think for now, that's probably good enough. So 
Yeah, this was neutral gray six. I'm gonna put a little bit more out. <clears throat> and we're ready to paint. I'm also gonna put out some clean white because I messed up my white when I was mixing. And that happens to everybody. Don't feel bad about that. Because I'm going to need that white for some highlights. All right, so let's go ahead and just fill in the paint now. Actually, no, we haven't drawn it on our we haven't drawn it on our canvas. All right, so let's do that. Um, uh, I got to move you guys over so I can look at my reference. Um, I'm, 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 I'm going to draw these grid lines on here. I'm just going to use a paintbrush to draw with. And I'm just going to use, you know, use like a, a middle tone. Maybe I'll use this brownish color. Sorry, I'm just trying to get my grid on here. And now this way, these tick marks. And this is an eight by 10, oops. I don't, I don't really see my tick marks on this side. Okay, so there's my grid. And I have my grid on my photo that I have at the same size. And I am ready to do what I did before. So I'm just gonna block in a squarish shape. Uh, the top of it is right about here. Face comes in like this. It's a little more than half, yeah. This is the center. Oh, that looks off. Okay, this is my center. This kind of goes like this. Okay, and then we're gonna round off
So I'm going to define it just a little bit more now. I don't know how I got this glob of red out here. This is too small of a brush for what I'm doing here. So I kind of took off too much of that corner when I got careless here. Okay, and then this value comes down to about here. I think it connects pretty good. Okay, let's switch to a larger brush. Well, here, let's just do this a little bit first, and then we'll switch to a larger brush. easier for me to turn it upside down. Sometimes that just makes it easier. Um, so now I'm going to switch to a bigger brush. I'm going to wet it. You know, and now I can just black in, you know, all of this. And um, I think I might get just a little bit lighter up here.
wipe some of that out, go back to my original true mid-tone color. Get that in here. get this okay I just need to kind of get it over the side edges too really quick while I have it because it's going to dry. And I was thinking I might come back in and add flowers or something to this later. I don't know. We'll see. back to this dark value here. If you cut in too much, you can always just use your finger. You know, and let these brush strokes show. Goes up to a I, know, I guess it kind of goes up to here. And there's just a hint of it back here. And it's also in this shadow. So let's get this in here now. Kind of goes off kind of straight off and I wish I still had a little bit more of that color to use I think I said I guess I do have enough I need to kind of soften the shadow and lighten it out here okay that's not too bad you can kind of see that all right and um, so now we're going to, and you lay in the shadow separately from the, the background. So actually I do need just a little bit more of this original color that I made. Oops, I screwed up. That's not the color. Let me get rid of this. Oh, this might work. Pinching the paint out of my brush. 
paint the edges while you have the color otherwise it's just you have to mix it again and it's a little hard <laughs> to do the exact mix you know okay and then now I'm ready for this foreground color I did not clean my brush out does it does continue off over here so I'm just gonna try not to keep blending it you just don't need to do that okay so it definitely has that drama which is what we want could even give it a little bit more drama, I suppose. Okay. Um, I think I can get just a hint of this over here. just kind of blend it in. I'm just going to leave it. Okay. And then I just need to soften this edge. Okay. Good enough. Made that just a hint darker right down there since I've since I've got it. And then it looks just the tiniest bit darker right here. So it's it's just it's cooler, darker. So I'm adding a little bit of black. Just gonna give me a little bit more drama. Gotta make sure I paint that right up to my subject so I don't have a hole later. So I'm just blending up the side. And then I need to just blend on the edge. All right. So I think the background looks pretty good. I can certainly come back in and do more to it, but I want to get the... Um... Hi, Teresa. Oh, is she still here? I don't know. I definitely want to get the vase color in there now. So, okay. Um, let's start with our mid-tone blue right here. And just lay that in. You know, the middle. I'm not going to worry about the highlights. Okay. 
and I'm doing brush strokes in the direction of the um, the subject, you know, because that's what I see. Okay, I'm gonna wipe my brush out. You can see through that just a little bit, which is bothering me, but it's okay. I've got enough paint that I can do a second layer. So now I'm gonna use this shade right here, the warmer shadow shade to lay in on this side. And we'll see if it really is dark enough. Oops, I went out just a little bit. So I'm using my arm to brace, to lift this hand, my painting hand up just a little. I actually, I like painting, um, you know, flat on a table in my old age. I don't know, I've just never gotten into easels too much. I have them, I just, I just find I don't use them. So I'm trying to negotiate this shape now. just not real clearly defined. You know, even in my photo, it's hard to see it. So now then there's this interesting reflection down here that looks really more yellow greenish. I'm going to take that shadow color over here and um, make it just a little bit greener. So I'm going to use my cool yellow. This might be way too much. Yeah, I think that was way, way, way too much. And it is also lighter. And of course, when we add white, we cool it. So, you no, know, that might work. Yeah, it's not bad. And I want these brush strokes to be kind of more clearly delineated. I think what I'll do is I'll use that muted yellow that I had over there. Yeah, I like that. Actually, it's a little bit wider. Goes up to about here. And there's a hint of it here also. But it's lighter. So, if a lip 
of a vase turns downward and you've got yellow reflecting on blue, it's, you're gonna see you know, just a hint of, of that in that lip. So, all right, so then I'm gonna pinch this out and I'm gonna add my warm um, light shade that I made. Remember this shade over here we didn't use yet. We're gonna put this on the side where the light is hitting over here. It's, you can see it's like a little bit lighter, like right in here. Might even need to go just a little bit lighter, adding a little bit more white. And yeah, that's definitely helping. So I'm just using the corner of my brush and definitely an even wider shade of this for this back lip side back here. see it here coming across. And then right about here, it gets lighter too. And kind of this starts to blend into that. So let's get that in there. Now I'm still just painting the form. I'm not really painting highlights yet. You save the highlights for later. Sorry about that, somebody was calling. So I'm gonna kinda just blend this into the rest. All right, get us back to this original shade we had, oops. soften this with the same tone over here so I'm doing this like little little bits of um, reflected light that I see in there oh that was too light <laughs> so these little bits of reflected light in here So if that was too um, dark, I can just kind of modulate it a little bit. There we go, that looks better. And I need a darker tone actually right here for the front of this lip. Just checking out all the different nuances of things. Now I got this super dark that I didn't use yet. So let's get some of this in here. This is the this really dark, darkest dark of the blue, which comes in right about here. It's like kind of needs to be the same value as that background.
this lip is even darker. Inside here is dark. Okay, and then this connects. Sometimes your finger is the best tool to help something blend. this off and if your paper towel starts getting really filled up with stuff just get a new paper towel <laughs> it can get so messy you know So when you want to blend and soften, um, use like a filbert or a round brush. Let me get my round brush out of the water here. And, well, you know, it's funny, now that I'm looking at the subject in front of me, it's much greener. Wow, than this painting. This is interesting. I think my photocopier made it look really um, blue. Anyway, okay, so I can now with this brush, I can kind of soften and blend a little bit more, you know, while it's wet. I keep wiping my brush off because if I have too much paint on there, I get hard edges. All right, so now I need a more, um, right in here is a more saturated color. So I'm gonna mix that with a little bit more phthalo blue green shade. a really more pure phthalo blue green shade oh that's way too so I want it to be more chroma have more chroma more saturation let's see how this looks this might be too much but we'll see just a little yeah that might work And so I'm squinting and just, you know, getting a little bit of this in there. I mean, try not to break it apart too much. Just try and think of the big shapes. Don't go too crazy with this or, it, you know, it won't hold together. Which mine may not be holding together enough, to tell you the truth. Blending this all in. Blending this part into that. Now, so here I can mix these two together since they're right next to each other. Make something in the middle or right here. And then I think this was just a little bit darker under here. All 
I can go a little bit warmer also. I'm adding just a little bit more um, yellow, cool yellow. Since I, I really do see it quite a bit warmer. over here. Softening. Okay, so this is too light, way too light back here. So we're gonna we're gonna darken that back up again. Because it's it's just not holding together. It's not holding that shadow shape together. And that's just a value thing. And those are really hard to get. It's, hard, it's really hard to get those little nuances. This needs to be just a little bit darker too. So I'm using that slightly darker shade. You know, I'd, I'd rather that we get values that are really working than anything else. That's what this whole purpose of this is, you know. Here I'm going to use a little more chroma right in this part. Blend that into that. but it does become green. So I'm gonna add some yellow. Oops, <laughs> way too much. Maybe a warmer green, yeah. Let's see if that works better. That might be a little bit better. More subtle. Okay, this line right here, you can tell that I'm indecisive about it. <laughs> I mean, you can tell I'm being a little indecisive. I just don't have it yet because I haven't really thought about it enough, I guess. And then this becomes really pretty white over here, pretty light, not white, but a lot lighter. So let me go see if I can get that a little bit lighter. But yet it has to stay warm, so. That might be better. Maybe not. No, not that green. A little purer. We know. And back on this side, it's almost white. Let's 
See, I think part of my problem is I'm starting to look at the object in front of me. And I might be getting a little bit um, confused on my plan between the two. All right, so let's just block this in a little bit better. Yeah, I kind of wish I had made it greener, but... Oh well. It's getting a little better, I think. In here, it's just a little bit more of a cool blue, right? Here it's more saturated. Okay, and then it I don't know, it's just such a weird shape. You know? <laughs> Sorry, I'm being a little bit weird here, you guys. Just figuring it out. Or trying to figure it out. This comes around just a little bit more. I think we're getting there now. <laughs> Here it's more saturated. It's almost like you gotta put this middle part in and then and then do the blend between the two, you know? Finding that, that happy medium. And there's a reflection there. Oh, I might be, I just might be starting to get it now. Wow, you really have to negotiate this half-tone blend part right here, you know? This would be a good place to use like a really soft um, brush to kind of help you blend. So this is just a dry brush I had sitting here. I don't know that this is really helping a whole lot, but I think it did blend it a little bit better. Yeah, it did, didn't it? Yeah, okay. All right. And then I really, um, really 
want this reflection just a little bit lighter. And then I want this part a little bit lighter. Yeah, it's lighter than I realized. This goes up to about here. And then this is lighter than, than it looks over here. Okay, and then there's that little reflection back there, but it's it's much darker than I thought. So let's see. Yeah, that's a better reflection, I think. All right, now I think I'm ready for my highlight. I want to get this just a little lighter in here. Trying to get a hint of um, these. There's like a ripple kind of thing in here. That's well. That might be that'll that'll darken though. All right, let's see if we can put our highlight on now. I'm getting a little, <laughs> oh, a little tired of this painting. Nice big highlight right here. Highlight back here. All right, I think that's it. Um, I do want this to disappear just a little bit more into the background, so I'm going to attempt to get that just a little bit darker back there.
you know, and that might really make the whole vase um, pop just a little bit more. It's gonna help. Gotta bring it up on this side too then. And I might put just a hint of my, um, I think I want to put a hint of um, some of these colors in with this now too. My dark greenish color. You know, just for harmony's sake. I am going to put a little bit of that back there. It'll, it'll make it just a little more interesting, I think. So now I'm going to switch to the big brush and um, I don't know, maybe I will make the, this uh, hmm, upper part a little bit warmer. Oh, I might regret that. But I think if anything, it's it's just going to give it a little bit more harmony. So we're going to get some interesting nuances of other colors back here now. Probably an Amazon delivery, right? <laughs> oh, Charlie, you're such a good watchdog. get to be oh they're, they're here mowing oh gosh all right well we will end the lesson here it's gonna start getting really um, loud here in a second I can hear them in the distance mowing so um, I'll come back on <laughs> yep here they come ay, ay, ay. I like what the black did. Oops. Charlie. Yeah. 
and um, I have this this crackle stuff that I want to use. I don't know how well that would work on here, but I would love to see what would happen if I if I put the crackle on top of that, you know. Put just a hint of the darker color back here. I gotta pay the guy before he leaves, too. Gonna be done before I'm done, huh? They're so fast when they mow. to finish so I can pay this guy before he's gone. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. What do you think? All right. Ooh. Yeah, it's just not a good idea to rush through this stuff. He's already doing the weed whacking. All right, I think that's gonna have to be good enough, you guys. I'll let you go and I'll, um, I'll show you a finished painting in a second. He's looking at me. All right, so that's it. Hope you liked it. Bye, guys. Finished.